everyone, Chelsea here from A Frugal Homestead. Today we're going to talk about pepper plants. Um, this is one of our green pepper plants. We also have a yellow pepper and red pepper. They're not doing quite as well as our green peppers. But we haven't been uberly successful with peppers. We live in a zone 7. And typically we do have really hot temperatures that peppers like. But for whatever reason we haven't been super successful. But this year has been a really great year. Uh, we have a different location for our garden, the soil is much better, and our peppers have done really well. And that's super exciting for us because I love to freeze our peppers, and um, we have plenty of peppers to freeze. So when our peppers get full grown, these ones on here right now are pretty small, but when they get full, full grown, I pluck them off and I freeze them and preserve them. But let me show you a few things about our pepper plants that might be of interest to you and might be some problems that you have as well and maybe how we can fix them. All right, here's one of our bigger peppers. And you can see the base of this pepper looks just fine. Really beautiful, no blemishes. That's great. Here's another one. Different right? We've researched this and this is what they call bottom rot. And bottom rot um, has many causes, but the main one for us is too much nitrogen and not enough calcium. Now we know for a fact that our soil here where we're located, um, we have a lot of nitrogen and that's because we have some farmland that had a lot of livestock on it. And so the nitrogen is pretty high. We also assume we don't have a lot of calcium. And so what I've done, and you can't see it here. If you get really close though, you can kind of see that we've got, I've added eggshells from our chickens to our soil to add some calcium to it because we're pretty sure that we lack some calcium. And that also helps to kind of, um, counter the nitrogen a little bit so you can see the bottom rot on this one but you don't see it on this one so our hope is that these new smaller peppers that are coming on after we've added the calcium that they won't have the bottom rot now there is a small one here that has a little bit of rot on it so it's just kind of an experiment for us to see what happens but bottom rot is one of the issues that you can find with peppers. Now the nice thing about uh, bottom rot though is it's not bacterial or fung fungal so you can actually just chop the yucky part out and still maintain and eat the rest of this pepper and so that's what we're going to do as we freeze our peppers today. I'm going to wash all my peppers and check for any blemishes or rot. Next I'm going to turn my peppers upside down and I slice through each of the different ridges on the pepper and I found that this makes it kind of into a blossom like this kind of like a little um, flower and then I can just take each of the sections off and then I can julienne them or chop them or slice them however I want. And once they're sliced I just place them right into the Ziploc bag that will they'll be fr frozen in. Now, when it comes to plastic bags, I personally, um, when I'm freezing something, I always use the Ziploc brand just because I feel like my frozen food stays fresher longer. It doesn't get freeze bite as quickly. Um, so that's just me though. Now on this pepper, you can see there are some blemishes on it. And so as I'm slicing into this pepper, I will watch and see how things look and I might cut things out. Now, just looking on the inside of this pepper, see the coloring is off. Um, it has some like slimy stuff. So I actually am not even going to freeze this pepper. I'm going to put it right in my chicken bucket and my chickens can use that pepper. So it's something to watch for. This pepper you can see it has a blemish as well so I'm going to just slice into it on the bottom again 
And then as I'm pulling my pieces out, I'm gonna watch for that blemish and I'll slice it out. So it's right there. So I'm just gonna cut this slice out or chunk and then I can Julian or slice or cube or whatever those pieces. Um, on this particular bag, I am Julian and Julian, Julian, and I don't know how do you plural that, Julianing. <laughs> Um, but you can just chop them as well. And I will actually chop them um, for stir fry or for uh, if I'm going to do kebabs on the grill. Now I'm going to make sure that my Ziploc bag is sealed really tight. Make sure that I labeled it. I'm going to seal it so there's no air in it. If I have to reopen it and kind of squeeze some of the air out, I will because air and moisture equals bad food. So these are my julienne peppers here. And then here is a bag of chopped peppers. So you can see they're just in chunks. Um, I usually do larger pieces because I like to use them like on kebabs. I can always make them smaller but I can't make small ones bigger. So, you know, if I was gonna use this like in an omelet or something, I'd probably chop it smaller, obviously. But for like kebabs or some types of stir fry, I like them bigger. So I'll freeze them larger and then I can cut them down later.